Welcome to the Intuitive Eating and Body Positivity Podcast. I'm Terry and I'll be talking about all things intuitive eating, body positivity and health at every size, and shaking off weight stigma, diet culture and food rules so that we can all have a better relationship with food and our bodies. Well, you guys have not worked hard enough this week. I did not have a phone call from Strictly Come Dancing. I thought you guys were going to do the work for me. I thought you were going to share all my stuff and make me famous. And then Strictly would get in touch this week and um, invite me on next year's show. But that has not happened. It's not happened. It's a shame. (laughs) <laughs> well, try again, eh? We'll keep trying. One day, you watch this space. One day, you'll be watching Strictly, you'll hear my name, and then you'll say, I know her, I've been listening to her podcast for years. You just watch. Let's put my Strictly Come Dancing issues to one side. How are you doing? Are you okay? Have you had a good week? I've had a good week, I think been a pretty average week at work. I, as you are aware, had my 10 year anniversary this week. Um, By the way, sorry if you could hear jangling up until now. It was my bracelet. I'd forgotten to take it off. So I've done that now. Sorry about that. So yes, 10 year anniversary this week. And as you know, I had organised for our wedding photographer to do a 10 year anniversary shoot for us. So that was really lovely. I had such a good time. Did that yesterday. We traipsed off up to this area that is fields and woodland and country paths and nice space to have photos done and just left it in the photographer's hands. Just said, here we are. Do what you will. So we spent an hour and a half up there just taking photos of me and my husband and the kids who are no longer kids. They are 22 and 17, so they're not exactly children. But we haven't had a family photo done for such a long time, probably since the wedding. So that was nice to have some time with them, get some photos of them as well. Um, So hopefully we've got a really nice set of photos of us as a family and us as individuals and us as me and my husband and my two together. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing them. I really am. And you know what? I wasn't even worried about it. I was just excited. It's funny how time changes things. I would historically have not shied away from being in a photo, But I would have spent the run up to something like the photo shoot being super worried about how I looked, what I was going to wear, how it would fit, how I would stand. Would I remember to breathe in? You know, all these sorts of things. And I didn't have any of that this week. It was so refreshing. We just went and had a nice time. We stood up, we sat down, we leant on fences and, you know, did just daft stuff. And I came away from there being so happy and not having worried about how I looked. Even the individual shots that were being taken, it was just me in a field, nowhere to hide. And I was just happy being there and happy just having these memories made. Because that's the thing for me. I love photos and I love the memories of photos. I love actual printed photographs that you can hold in your hand and look at. Over the years, we've got the boxes of photos out because I've been looking for something in particular. And then we've ended up spending time just sat rummaging through photos and photos and photos. And then my niece and nephews have been round and we've got the box of photos out. And it's just so special to be able to talk to people, talk to the kids, 
and show them about things that have happened in the past and people that they know that they might not recognise anymore because it's been such a long time or people that they don't know they've never met. Because of this, because of how I feel about photos, having these photos done were really important to me. I am really looking forward to seeing how they turned out. I did say to the photographer, no hurry, it's fine, take your time, I know you're busy. And really I'm like, can I have them today, please? Are you done editing yet? I know it was only yesterday, but can I have them now? I'd really like that. (laughs) Oh, I have to wait. I'm not very good at waiting. I'm very impatient. After we'd done that, Owen and I went off to Worcester, which is, you know, not far from where we live. It's about a half hour, 40 minute drive from where we live. And we had a night on our own, just us two, stayed in a hotel, went and got some nice food, went and got some drinks um, and the kids just went off back home. We didn't have really mammoth plans for the evening. We just knew we were going to go and get some food, get some drinks, stay in a hotel, come back the morning after, which is this morning at the time of recording. We went to the best Italian restaurant. Right, actually, I take that back. It's not the best because I believe the best Italian restaurant is actually here where we live. There's an amazing little Italian, proper traditional little Italian called Ponte Vecchio. And it is just my favourite place to eat. However, away from where we live, (laughs) that was the best little Italian restaurant I have ever been to. So, so good. It was bustling and busy, but it was a pretty small place. So the tables were in there quite compactly. But the atmosphere was amazing. We were greeted by the best front of house guy, this proper Italian guy, who is the most cheerful Italian I think I've ever spoken to. Not that I've spoken to a lot of Italian people, but he's definitely the most cheerful. Anyway, Seatsus gives us the menus and there was just the most delicious food available. It was actually verging on difficult to order because I couldn't decide, do I have a pasta? Do I have a pizza? Do I have this for starter? Do I have that for starter? I mean, I've said before, my go-to is a breaded brie, but there were other things on the menu tempting me astray on the starters. That's how good it was. So as a starter, I ended up having um, an antipasto and it was bread and cheese and these cured meats. I even had olives. I don't like olives. I didn't like olives, but apparently now I do. I don't think I could still have them in a pot. You know, people have little containers of them or they come in a little dish with a couple of toothpicks and just the olives. I don't think I could eat them like that. But I was eating them with this meat and with this bread and I really enjoyed them. So that's new. But I guess this is the thing, isn't it? When you start focusing on your relationship with food and trying to change the foods that you eat on a regular basis, your palate changes and the variety of foods that you like become different. I guess you get kind of in tune with the types of foods that you're used to eating. So when I was on Slimming World, it was a lot of pasta, a lot of rice, a lot of what's potentially bland stuff. And it was never very well flavoured because I didn't used to put an awful lot in it, maybe just some salad stuff. Oh, so depressing, isn't it? Just things like cucumber and bits of pepper. Maybe... Maybe if I was pushing the boat out, a bit of sliced wafer thin ham. That's just boring, isn't it? So then when you start eating a variety of foods, your tastes are changing and you're suddenly, oh my goodness, what is all this food that I can now have and enjoy? And I think that must have been what happened with the olives. Maybe I've let my taste buds and my palate develop and mature and be accepting of all these new flavours. But I really enjoyed them. And fair dues, that was a big old 
board of cured meats as well. That was not a small starter. But yeah, that was so tasty. I even don't think I would have picked that as a starter before, if I'm totally honest. I'd never have picked that on a menu. I'd have gone for the cheesiest, creamiest, breadiest options that there were. Because it's that whole restrict binge thing, isn't it? When you're not allowed to have these foods and suddenly you're off plan and able to choose from a list of these foods, you're going to have the thing that feels most naughty, most wrong on the list. But last night, sat there looking at the starters menu, that's what I really wanted. I didn't want the brie as much as I wanted the cured meats. So that is what I had. Then moving on to the main, I again was torn. Was I going to have a pizza? I do love a traditional, proper, stone-baked or fire-baked pizza. But I also like a really decent, fresh pasta. And there was a lot of that on the menu. A lot of different varieties, a lot of different flavours going on. I ended up having a ravioli stuffed with buffalo cheese, buffalo mozzarella and spinach. And it was in a really light tomato dressing and it had some herbs and things and, um, you know, this really fancy breadstick across the top. Who doesn't have a breadstick when they go to an Italian restaurant? But this pasta was incredible. And again, it was massive. I'm not kidding. These ravioli squares were huge. They were, well, I can't describe it. I'm not good with guessing measurements, but I'm going to say each ravioli was the size of the palm of my hand. So if you look at your hand, I know you're looking at your hand now. Imagine your hand without your fingers and your thumbs. That's about the size (laughs) I just realised I went, look at your hand and imagine it without your fingers and your thumbs. I know you have one thumb on a hand, okay? I got it. But if you imagine your hand without your fingers and your thumb, just what's left, that was about the size of one of those ravioli. And there was loads of them. Um, I'm going to say eight, maybe? And the filling in them was just gorgeous. It was so, so nice. My husband pointed out that when you have little ravioli at home, you know, if you buy it off the supermarket shelf or a little tortellini or something, you often don't get very much of a filling because there's not a lot of space. So you end up having more pasta to filling ratio. Well, these were just the perfect balance. They had such a good amount of filling in them and a really nice amount of pasta. The tomato sauce that they were in was really lovely. It was really light. You could tell it had been made with fresh, proper tomatoes. It wasn't a sauce that had been made out of some passata. And I think there was a bit of pesto in there as well. Really, really, really lovely dish. And moving on, obviously dessert was had. Obviously dessert was going to be had. And I had a caramel panna cotta which was really nice because after the amount of food I'd eaten, it was something that wasn't particularly heavy. It was just a nice, light dessert. And it was lovely. Really happy with that meal. The service was excellent. The venue was lovely. The food was incredible. Mmm. I do like to write a little TripAdvisor review. So I will be giving them a glowing five-star review. So happy with the meal. So happy with the service. It was really nice. And it makes a difference, doesn't it, when you really enjoy eating out. It's such an experience. It's not just about the food, it's about the overall experience. So that was really nice. Then we went off and we got some drinks in town. We didn't go to many places, to be quite honest. It was just nice to sit and have some drinks and have some chats. Some chats, you know what I mean. Um, we had, yeah, a couple of cocktails and a couple of vodkas, sauntered back to the hotel and sat in the hotel bar for a bit. It was 
really, really lovely to get away. It was really nice to have a break. And now today I'm on top of the world because I've just had a really nice day or two. A really nice day that's not been tainted by my own stupid issues. Rewind a few years and it would have been so tainted by what clothes I was wearing, what size I was, so much so that it would have ruined the whole experience. And that makes me sad to look back and think of the things that I've missed out on, the things that I've not enjoyed, the experiences and the time and the memories that I've lost because I've been so concerned and so hung up on what I look like, what I weighed, what food I was eating. What are you missing out on right now? Because your body or your food is stopping you doing things. Let's start with photos because that's what we've been talking about. Photos are a big one for a lot of people. If you are concerned about the way you look, to have that imprinted into a photo for the rest of time is a really uncomfortable thing for a lot of people. There's an old saying that the camera adds X amount of pounds. Well, that for starters is rubbish. The camera takes a picture of what is there. (laughs) That's the way a camera works. Unless you've got some lens on it that is there to distort in some way, like fisheye lenses that are there to kind of Oh, I'm not a photographer. My photographer friend is going to be cringing listening to this. But you know the sort of image that I mean, right? They use it a lot in property photos because it makes the room look wider. It just expands the amount that you can get into the shot, I think. I'm so sorry, Lindsay. I know that I don't talk in proper photography speak. (laughs) But my point is that a normal camera a normal lens, will just take a photo of what is there. It doesn't take the photo and then go, hang on a minute, let's make this one a little bit bigger. So that's the first thing to get rid of from your mind. Also, when you you are looking back at these photos, you should be seeing the memories attached to those photos. So when we look at these photos that we had done yesterday, The four of us are going to see us on top of a hill, in the wind, with the sun in our face, laughing at stupid poses, laughing at the stupid things that we were saying to each other to get each other to smile. The way that none of us seemed to understand when the photographer said, just get a bit closer, (laughs) just put your head to the side a bit, just turn your shoulder a little bit. Why are those things completely alien when you're posing for a photo? But that's what we should be remembering. Those are going to be the funny things that I remember from yesterday about having those photos done. And when we look at the photos as a family, none of us are going to be criticising each other for our weight, our lumps and bumps, how we look size-wise. None of us are going to be criticising each other for that. We're all probably going to be picking up on ourselves a little bit. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Oh, I don't know if I like the way I look in that one. I think that's a natural part of looking at yourself in photos. I don't think you can always like the way you look. That's not realistic. But on the whole, we're all going to be looking at these photos, loving the work that the photographer has done because we know he's incredible just appreciating that we've got those memories to have forever. I tried to get some photos of my son on his birthday, on his 17th birthday. And he wouldn't let me take some photos. And I said to him that day, one day you're going to want to look back. One day you're going to wish that there were photos whether that's photos with other people, whether that's just photos of yourself, marking a memory in time, you're going to wish that there were photos there. And he was like, no, 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 I won't, no, I won't. But it's the truth. And we shy away from cameras and things because because we're worried about the way we look. 
And what we're actually doing is missing all these opportunities to have something special to look back at. It's easy as well now to take photos, but they're so disposable, aren't they? Because you can take a photo and delete it in a second. There's something that happens quite a lot on social media that makes me laugh. Felt cute, might delete later. (laughs) Well, um, you must like it because you've posted it. (laughs) But what is wrong with that? What is wrong with liking the way you look in a photo? Feeling proud of how you look? Feeling like you look good enough to share it? Why delete it later? Why take it down? People are so reliant on comments, aren't they? And likes and shares and I'm going to delete it because I didn't get enough likes. Oh, that's a whole different story though, isn't it? Let's not get into that. But yeah, there there is so much opportunity to capture memories. Why shy away from that? Why shy away from being in a photograph with people that you enjoy spending time with, that you're having a good time with, that you want to be able to look back and remember with? I don't really have any photos with my mum growing up. It just wasn't the done thing in our house. I would love to have loads of photos of my kids around. And actually a big regret is that I don't have enough photos of me with the kids to look back on because I was so hung up on the way I looked that I just would rather just take the photos of them and not me with them. But that's a shame because you can't get that time back. So I would encourage you to put your feelings about your body aside, to take the opportunity to make those memories. Get yourself in the thick of it. Get in those photos. And never mind breathing in, turning around, posing correctly, you know, leg at a certain angle, side on because that'll make you look thinner. None of that. Just get in the photo. Just take the photo. Smile. Enjoy what you're making memories of. One day you'll appreciate having those. And even if you can't look at them yet, take the photos anyway. Take the photos anyway and print them off and put them aside. Because one day you might be happy to look back at them. I have a photo of me and my sister at her graduation. I was at my thinnest at this point. I was at the very bottom of my Slimming World journey. I say the bottom of my journey. It was the bottom of the journey. The only other way was up for my weight. But that's what happens with slimming journeys. Anyway, I was at my very thinnest, my very smallest, and I had a photo taken with my sister at her graduation. Just me and her. Again, we don't have a lot of photos like that. And I was so proud of her and I was so pleased to be there. And at the time, I wasn't that bothered about what I looked like. But when I looked at it after, I thought I was fat. Now, I'm going to post this photo on social media this week with my sister's permission, obviously. I'm going to post this photo so you can see how kind of deluded diet culture makes us. Because I was at my lowest weight then. I was thin. In this photo, I have a winter coat on and I still don't look big. I know that now. I didn't know that at the time. All I could see was how horrifically large I was, which I wasn't. So my point being, Take the photo anyway, even if you don't want to look at it now. Take the photo, print those photos. One day you'll love looking back at them. What else are you missing out on? What else have I missed out on? Fun, just fun. Doing things with the family. I've missed out on so much because I haven't wanted to do things because of my weight. So I've made excuses. There are certain things that I don't want to do genuinely don't want to do. So I don't like being on water very much. I love being by the sea. I love being by the river. I do not want to be on that water, really, if I can help it. I'm sure a cruise is a great experience, but it's not for me. Um, Kayaking, 
definitely not for me. But that is a just reason, I think. I just don't like the thought of not being able to help myself if something happened on that boat. I'm not a very strong swimmer. I can swim, but I'm not a strong swimmer. So the worry that something would happen and I couldn't swim to safety is where that comes from. So I think that's a just reason for not wanting to do those activities. But there have definitely been things in the past that I have not done because of my size. So one that sticks in my head is we went to a theme park one day. It was me and my husband and the kids. They were quite young and I didn't go on anything. I didn't get on and go on anything. Uh, He did. He went on with the kids. I looked after the bags. And I said that I had a bad neck that day. I said that I must have slept funny on it because my neck was really hurting. My neck wasn't hurting. I just didn't want to go through the embarrassment, worry, whatever it is, of trying to fit into a seat on a ride or be squashed or not have the harness come down or something like that. Now, again, I was not big. There were not just reasons for this. There were no reasons at all why those things would happen to me. I would have fitted in those seats. I would have been able to use the harness. But my stupid mind was telling me otherwise. And I was convinced I was too big to comfortably get on these rides. So I missed out. I missed out. And the kids missed out. And my husband missed out. And that won't have been the only time that that happened. There will have been multiple occasions where I have avoided doing things based on the way I look. Equally along those lines, things like wearing a swimming costume on the beach or by the pool. Things like that were a no-go for me because I was too ashamed of how I looked. I didn't think that I should wear a swimming costume. If I did have one on, I would have some kind of cover up over the top unless I was getting in the pool. And then it's whip it off quick, get in the pool quick. Get out the pool quick, get something on quick, you know. You feeling me? What else is it stopping you from doing? Along those lines, are you not playing games with your children? Are you not getting out and just running around the garden because you're worried about how you look? Are you not running around the park, maybe, with your kids? And not because you don't feel physically fit enough, but because you're worried about what people would think of you. Just in gay abandonment, running around a park, God forbid, you know? But I know that that's an issue for a lot of people. I know that that's a concern. You already think that you are of a size where people are just going to be paying attention and watching you anyway. So why would you put yourself out there and ask for more stares and glares? I know what you're feeling. Now, you also know my hatred of clothes shopping. It's not a pleasant experience when you're in a bigger body. But this week, it was quite nice to pick some clothes for the photo shoot. It was quite nice to be looking at clothes and would that coordinate with what everybody else was wearing and is it the right kind of style? You know, we were just going for a tidy jeans, really nice jumper, pair of boots, that sort of thing. You know, a bit of a country walk look. And it was really nice to find some clothes to wear out. Really nice. I chose to go to shops online that would suit me and would have adequate clothes for me to try. But before, I might not have even had the photo shoot based on the fact that clothes shopping would have been too stressful. This week coming, I've got an awards evening to go to for work. And I'm really looking forward to it. I'm getting the opportunity to put some nicer clothes on for the evening. You know, a nice dress or something. That would have put the fear of God into me a few years back. This week, I'm really looking forward to it. I don't care 
how big I am. I am going to wear something that makes me feel good. I don't care what people are going to think when they look at me. I am going to be dressed nicely, being there, representing the company, enjoying an evening, celebrating some work that we've done. That's the main thing. So what are you missing out on because you don't want to fight with clothes? You don't want to feel bad in clothes. You don't want to go to the hassle and through the stress of trying to find clothes that fit you. I understand. I really understand. But if you're honest with yourself, how much are you missing out on based on what clothes you're going to wear? So what else? What else are you missing out on in life? What experiences are you missing? How much time are you giving away to diet culture? How much are you giving to all those people and all those companies that tell you you don't look good enough or you shouldn't do something? What are you missing out on in life? What are your family and your friends missing out on? through you not joining in with things? It's a tough question to answer because it's emotional. It's highly emotive, the reasons why you're not joining in with things. It is so much easier to not do things, to not go places, to make your excuses. How many times have you feigned illness because you didn't want to go somewhere based on how you look? I'm going to put a chat box up on social media. And I want you to tell me, tell me what you're missing out on. There is no judgment here. I am not going to reply with a, well, you shouldn't do that. I do think though that if I can share the things that people don't get involved with, it helps other people to know that they're in the same boat. So let me know what you're not doing. Let me know what you're not involved in because you're too worried about your appearance or your weight. Let's let everybody know that we're all in the same boat together. There's more people out there who know exactly what you're going through. I do encourage you to try and get yourself out of that as well. That would be ridiculous because I'm not here to tell you to keep hiding and to keep missing out. I'm here to do the complete opposite. I want you to enjoy all these experiences. So, make a little pact with me right now. Commit to doing something that you usually wouldn't do. If that is taking your child to the park and playing football, do it. If you have to take a photo in private, just so you can say you've taken a photo of yourself that you're not going to delete, do it. You don't have to share these things with anybody. You can just do it for your own self. Have a photo taken with your husband, your wife, your kids. Do something out of the ordinary. Make a little pact with me right now that you're going to do something a little different. You're going to put yourself out there a bit. You're going to get out of that comfort zone and you are going to take a stand and you are going to put a big two fingers up to diet culture and say that you deserve to enjoy those moments just like everybody else does. Do it. Do it with me now. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Please. (laughs) Okay, I am done for this week. I don't know if you can tell in this recording, but I'm struggling with my throat a little bit. If I keep talking to you, I'm going to end up with no voice and I'll just be a whisper at the end like this. Uh, So I'm not going to talk for much longer. But one thing I did want to request of you before I do go is, will you please sign up for my newsletter? Now, that's not just me begging for you to join up and get my newsletter. There is a reason behind this. You may or may not follow on social media an account called The Fat Doctor. Now, she is actually brilliant. She speaks a lot of truth. She is a GP and she is fighting for people to have better health care. She wants everybody to be able to 
access healthcare without the need to worry about what that medical professional is going to say about their weight. In fighting her good fight, though, she's come up against a lot of people who don't like what she's saying, and her accounts are getting constantly reported for violating Instagram's rules or Facebook's rules. They're reporting her for things like racism and hate speech and targeting people. That's not what her account is about. It's just a reason for these people to give when they're reporting her account. And of course, because they have to be seen to be acting on these things, they're taking her account down routinely. And so she's built up all of these followers, thousands and thousands of followers. She's spreading good messages and Instagram keeps coming along and shutting her account down. And the last time it happened, she basically put a post up on a different account saying she was tired of this fight. She was tired of the fight against Instagram. She wants to continue the work that she's doing, but she can't do it on Instagram when there's so much backlash at her. And it's just angry people who don't know what they're talking about. You know, Fitzbo accounts and people who don't know what she knows, people who aren't educated in the stuff that she's educated in. And this worries me a bit. I am trying to build my social media accounts because I also want to spread the word. So please do come over and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'd like that very much. Um, But my concern is that I would do much the same. I would build up this following and then somebody would take a dislike, would report it to Instagram or Facebook. And before you know it, the account is gone. No questions asked. Then how do you find the information from me? Then how do you get the information from me on how to be more intuitive in your eating, how to be more body confident, how to recognise when messages are not correct and when they're damaging? How are you going to get that information from me if my account is shut down? Now, I don't think I'm doing anything particularly controversial, so I don't think that's a very real risk at the moment, but it takes one post and one complaint to wipe out a social media account. If you're signed up to my newsletter, no one can take that away from you. I will have your email address. I will send you regular updates. No one can take that away. You can say you don't want to receive it anymore. And that is absolutely your choice. But let it be your choice. It shouldn't be the choice of a big company that hosts these social media accounts. So the reason for me asking you to sign up to the newsletter is so that you have a link with me that can't be taken away unless you choose to remove it. I'm going to start tailoring my newsletters a little bit differently. They've been very generic up until now. My newsletters going forward are going to have content in them that's not going to go on the social media platforms. I'm not going to put this stuff out as social media posts. So I'm going to be sending you a weekly message that's something that you can't get anywhere else anyway. It's not hard selling. There's no spammy stuff going on. I'm not going to bombard you with emails day in, day out. Just a weekly email with some helpful information and hopefully something that makes you smile in your inbox once a week rather than the spammy stuff that I seem to have an absolute abundance of. Please pop along to the website and it's terrypew.co.uk forward slash newsletter. How very original. (laughs) I'll put the link in the show notes anyway so you can just pop into the show notes and click on the link. But please, please do come and join the newsletter list I think you're going to really like it going forward. Okay, have an amazing week. I hope you've got some nice things planned. Take care of yourself and remember how awesome you are. Speak to you next week. Bye bye.